In this section, we are going to learn about iterative statements. This is the second part of control statement. In previous sections, we have already gone through conditional statements. Now we are going to learn various loops we have in JavaScript. JavaScript has three types of loops. Do while loop, while loop and for loop. They can be used to achieve the same thing with minor syntax change. Let's directly start working on do while loop and then we will understand the syntax for each type of loop. When you want to repeat a process, then you use a loop. For example, you want to print 1 to 10. Now when you say you want to print 1 to 10, that means you have to repeat a process. When there is a need of repeating a process, you always consider an iterative statement. For example, we take a variable which begins with 1. Now I am going to say do. This is the syntax. You open the curly bracket and at the end of curly bracket, you give the condition that this process which you are going to write in the do loop should end when this condition is false. For example, I want to repeat a process of printing the value of a till a is less than equal to 10. Now if I run the same code which you see, this will keep on repeating 1, it will not change the value of a. So this will be a kind of endless loop, a loop which never ends. But because we want that a should reach to 10 at some point of time, let's try to increment value of a by 1. Let's run this and see how the output looks. As you can see, the output is starting from 1 to 10. So this process is repeated. This process of printing a value is repeated 10 times. If I join a value here, let's say 10 times, I just want to say hello. Then the output will be along with the number, hello will be printed 10 times. If the same loop I use with the while syntax, then it goes something like this. While a less than equal to 10. Now if you see, in case of while, it checks the condition first and then it executes. So if you compare do while and while loop, then in case of do loop, the condition is checked at the end. That means do loop will execute at least once. Then it will check the condition. Whereas in case of while, it checks the condition first. Let's also try to display the same here and we'll increment a by 1. Of course, the output is going to be the same, that is 1 to 10, but now we are using while loop. Now let's try for loop. If we want to display 1 to 10 using for loop, then for loop syntax is like this. You have to give the start here, that is the beginning. Let's say the start is A begins with value 1. When do you want the end here? That is when a is less than equal to 10, that is condition. And then you give the increment or decrement. So if I just try to display value of a in this case, the output is 1 to 10. So for loop has a different syntax. It has three sections. The first section is the start. The second section is end or condition. And the third section is increment or decrement. Why am I saying increment or decrement? Because right now we have given a is equal to a plus 1. But we can say a is equal to a minus 1. Let's say we want to display 10 to 1. Then the code will be something like this. a is equal to 10. Then a is greater than equal to 1. And of course a minus minus. So we decrement the value of a and this is going to display 10 to 1. So these are the three loops we use 
to repeat our process. Apart from these three loops, we have for in, for of, for each. Depending on the type of collection or object, we use different ways of iteration. But this is a part of control statement. So when we talk about the core language, these three loops are used. Let's try a few more combinations here. For example, let's try to print all odd numbers between 1 to 30. So we have 1 as a start and end as 30. So it will begin with 1. Then what I'll do, I'll just say start is equal to start plus 2. So every time there will be an increment of 2. Of course, instead of writing like this, we can use the compound assignment which we have already seen in previous sections. So I can say start plus equal to 2. This is equivalent to start is equal to start plus 2. And now I can check the condition here. So I'll say start less than equal to the end number. Right. So anytime you can change this, you may get this number from user both the numbers from user and you can try this. Let's run this and see how is the output. Now as you can see it displays all the odd numbers. If at all you want to print all even numbers you can begin the start with 2 here and it will display all the even numbers between 2 and 30. The same thing if you want to try with a while loop then instead of do I will just say while and the condition will remain same start less than equal to end and at the end there won't be any condition. So this is just a different syntax to achieve the same result. But as I mentioned do and while these two are different loops in case of do the condition is checked at the end whereas while will check the condition first. So it depends on the situation accordingly you can use do while or while loop. Let's try the same thing with for loop also. Now in case of for loop I can write let start is equal to 2 here only. But let's say I do not want this here because I have declared the variable on top. So when you do not have any value as a start in the for loop you keep the semicolon that means this section you keep empty. Now let's put the end condition so I'll say start less than equal to end and start plus equal to 2 and here in the for loop we are going to display the value of start. Just need to correct. So we have this output which is displaying all even numbers between 2 and 30 using for loop. There are situations where we may avoid the end also and the increment as well. For that we have to use a break statement which we are going to see in the next section. Next section we'll check break and continue statement which can be used with a loop to skip an iteration or to come out of the loop. Thank <laughs> you.